Am I recording, Dorothy? I am. Oh, <laughs> I, might yes. bet, I might bet Dorothy's job. Yes. So good evening, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday Night's Full Huddle here. It is uh, April the 23rd, and um, we're going to continue talking about exercise. I was just getting ready to say something about um, what, uh, how this relates to what we all do. And it's because once somebody reaches their goal weight, uh, there's more to do. We actually have uh, three stages there. You reach your goal weight, you transition out, and then you work towards your optimal health, whatever that looks like for you. And exercise is part of that. Yay, yay, Lisa. And so that's the reason we're covering this. And we have people in here that uh, have participated in exercise, are participating in exercise, and will be participating in exercise in some form. And so I thought it, it I'm gonna go ahead, huh? great to do it in a way that we're doing it correctly. That's, that's why I'm excited to get all of this from different sources and then share it with you. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And uh, if uh, anyone thinks they need to mute, you can mute individually and unmute. Just, just pay attention to what's going on around you. So let's share the screen. And welcome everybody. All our little habit champions are here present and accounted for. Thank you guys very much. And uh, this week's uh, Habits of Health webinar is going to be Change Your Mindset, Change Your Life. And of course, that is going to be tomorrow night at 8.30. And if you miss the recording, then we'll try to get it posted there in the uh, support group. Sometimes I send them to people who still ask me to do that, and I have no problem doing that either. So feel free to ask me anytime, and I'll send you I'll send it to you. And tonight, uh, exercise in the aging process, staying fit as you age. Uh, healthy lifestyle, you know, they both fit into, they, I've seen where they call it the twin powers, nutrition and exercise. And it takes both of them to really have a healthy life, uh, all of your life. The uh, last week we covered Know Your Zones. And I just wanted to run that past that again. And it's taking your heart rate at birth, which is 220. And you're, has anybody done theirs? Do they know what their um, heart rate range is? I did. Excellent. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, good bad because I couldn't remember the numbers, but I took a resting heart rate uh, and a heart rate while I was at the peak of exercise. And I think my resting was 61, and peak of exercise was 101. But I don't, I was, don't know where those numbers fall in at. So you take 220. That's your heart rate at birth. You subtract your age from that, and then that gives you your your heart rate, that uh, your your normal heart rate. When you take and multiply that by 60 percent, you're getting yourself into the fat burning state, and then that's where you're literally burning fat. And then if you want to bump it up a little bit and burn some glucose, then that's 75% of that number. So my range is anywhere between 91 and 113, and I want to stay closer to the 91 to burn fat and only visit the 113 on the uh, occasion. What do you uh, multiply the answer by? 60? Yeah, 60% 60 of your, the, the 220 minus your age gives you your uh, average heart rate for burning fat. Then if you want to bump it up and burn glucose, which is fine, but you're not going to stay in that range much, it's 75% of that number. And that is your range that you want to stay in. And just as long as you're over that, like for me, it would be the 91, I'm burning fat. Um, most of us desire to burn body fat. That's part of what our program is, the fat burn. And I, I find it so interesting that as I've studied this, that there's an there's a interesting parallel there about doing this correct and burning fat as opposed to uh, the glucose or the ATP. Um, it doesn't make sense to use the tools 
to stay at your target rate from burning fat, it does make doesn't it make sense to use the tools to stay at your target rate for burning fat as the primary fuel? So what happens when you start exercising? Because not everybody is, and it's something that kind of goes to the wayside as your life gets busy and other things take priority. So you don't want to go from not exercising to exercising. And if you're on the five and one, then we really don't want you huffing and puffing anyway. But you can do what the beginners do, and there's a correct way to be a beginner. So if you are just starting out after receiving clearance from your doctor, that's always important. Just a simple walk around the block will do, particularly if you are overweight and out of shape. I don't know how many stories I have heard internally of someone that walked the block and they were out of breath. Then they walked around the block and then they walked two blocks. Then they walked the whole neighborhood. And then they actually have ran in marathons. And it all started with just starting to walk and being consistent with it. Your objective should be to walk slowly on a flat surface as long as you can go without breathing too hard. If you cannot carry on a conversation without gasping for air in between words, you are walking too fast. Once you start doing this for 15 minutes, you should start monitoring your pulse before you walk. Figure out your target range. So just get yourself up to sometime during the course of a day, taking a 15 minute walk. If you don't get to the 15 minutes, it's only three minutes or it's only five minutes, that's your beginning. And you will eventually get to that 15-minute walk. And when you get to that 15-minute walk, then you can actually start doing things with intention. We covered the, how you get your target rate, uh, the 220 minus your age times the 60%. After you get to that 15 minutes and you want to start monitoring your pulse, you can either use a device that uh, measures your heart rate if you have one. But if you don't, after walking five minutes, take your pulse for 15 seconds. You can do that on your wrist or you can do that on your uh, artery here in your neck. And in 15 seconds, count the number of times it be beats and then multiply that by four and you'll know what your heart rate is at that time. Learn what it feels like to be in your target rate because you will be able to tell it once you get familiar with it. So walking at 60% heart rate equals three to five calories burned, still using fat as the primary fuel source. If we increase enough to get our heart rate to 80%, we are now using seven to 10 calories per minute, and we are still burning fat, but now we need more carbohydrates to help because the exercise intensity has increased. So you're moving a little above, the fat burn. If you want to stay in the fat burn, you stay below 70%. 60 to 70%, you're totally burning fat. When you get to 75, 80%, you're going to start hitting the carbs. When you get up to 90%, you're going to hit that ATP and you're not going to be there long because it's in short supply. If we all remember last week, right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, okay. As we get into better condition, we burn more muscle. Do we remember why we burn more calories? Do we remember why we burn more calories? Because muscle burns more calories. Exactly. Than and you will have to. The more muscle mass you have for your body weight ratio, the higher your metabolism is and the more calories you burn. So now we're going to get into different kinds of exercise to do and as baby steps, little at a time. So you can use a pedometer to count your steps. A good goal is 10,000 steps a day. And once you hit that goal, you shoot to 70,000 steps per week. I really haven't counted during the week. I'm, I'm, I've always looked to get 10,000 and I don't get them every day. Back when I was going to the gym every day, it was easy. But I haven't been doing that since I've been having different health issues. So uh, I'm, that's, that's my goal is to get back to doing those 10,000 steps a day. And once I get back to doing the 10,000 steps a day, I'm going to see if I'm hitting 70,000 steps a week. That's a goal for me. Having a walking partner is good because if you didn't feel like getting out because you worked hard that day or maybe the weather is not conducive to getting out and walking, just having that partner that says, come on, let's go, is sometimes all it takes to get you out there. Aerobics, all right, that's, that's the next exercise we're going to talk about. 
Aerobics keeps your heart healthy and it increases your endurance. Exercise will help your blood pressure and your cholesterol. The best way to maximize your results with aerobic exercise is referred to as cross training. Our bodies are very efficient machines. If we are always keep doing the same routine, our body will try to conserve and will actually use less energy. That's very familiar to when we don't get calories and our body will, or our, our body sees that we're not getting enough calories, then it will slip back into the conservation. So there is something very similar that applies when we're exercising. And if we're doing the same thing all the time, and I knew this, but I haven't practiced this because I always go and I do the treadmill for 30 minutes. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to mix it up a little bit because I do want to maximize my effort. So what do you suggest? is to do the bicycle for 10 minutes, get on the elliptical for 10 minutes, and then get on the um, treadmill for 10 minutes. Uh, the objective is to keep the heart rate at a steady 60 to 70% range. It is also good to push to the 70 and 80% once in a while. Dance is also great because it's fun and it is aerobic exercise. It's fun with friends and you have accountability. Strength training. That's the next form of exercise they talk about. Now, we have seven different forms of exercise, but we're going to stop with strength training. We're doing aerobic, we're doing the walking, and we're doing the strength training this week, and we'll get into the other categories next week. I just really didn't want to uh, speed through any of this because I think there's something here for everyone. So you lose muscle as you age. We all know that. We learn it in everything. Strength training benefits maintaining bone density, it's less risk of osteoporosis, preventing loss of muscle strength, reducing muscle strain and joint injury that comes with aging, better posture and body shape, maintaining functionality, and uh, speeding up the metabolism. Um, the, it's, I should add, that with that walking, when, when Marsha was walking, she was having a, a, making a big difference in your um, blood sugar, right, Marsha? Oh, she must have muted herself. But it, it, uh, it does help you with diabetes. If you're borderline or diabetic, getting out and walking is, is really good for you in that way. It's important to add that strength training to your fitness program to keep muscles from atrophy, shrinking in size, and to prevent bone loss as you age. So, Lisa, you want to read now? The seven strength building principles, sets. This refers to the total number of repetitions performed in a given exercise. The number of sets vary with the type of equipment used. If fatigue is achieved during one set of exercise, then only one set is necessary. Reps. This is the number of times you move the resistance through the full range of motion. There are two parts to repetition. So concentric movement, muscle contraction, the bicep muscle is shortening while contracting. Eccentric muscle contraction, the bicep mu muscle is lengthening while contracting. So when they talk about if your muscle reaches fatigue, that's when you get tired and you're doing, and that's the last one that you can do. You've reached fatigue. If that happens in one set, then you're done. And the rep set you do, that they really determine that with your age. Here are some recommended reps for general training purposes. Go ahead, Dorothy. Are you leaning into your computer? I'll be sitting on it pretty soon. Because <laughs> I can't, can everybody hear her? No. So I'll go ahead. Uh, Denise, can you see that? Yeah. So start, some with, start with age. Okay. Yeah, recommended reps for general training purposes, age 20 to 40, 8 to 12 reps, age 41 uh, to 50, 12 to 15 reps, age 60 and above, 15 to 20 reps. Even though muscle tissue continues to rejuvenate, we become weaker because of inactivity and bone and cartilage loss. There, uh, therefore, it is best 
to achieve fatigue at a higher number of reps, which puts less stress on its on the joints. So Tony goes to the gym and he will want to do the heavy weights, and he'll work those heavy weights while he's there and then he'll leave and he'll be t sore and and he doesn't go back and do them y'all heard him say all the time oh, i need to get back into exercising this was one of the principles i wanted him to hear so he would start with a lower weight and use the higher reps and we'll, we'll get a little more in there weight the weight that this refers to, to the amount of resistance. So you start at a lower weight, weight like a five pound weight uh, or a 10 pound weight maybe for him. And then once the muscle is fatigued within the range mentioned, that's when he wants to stop. When you can do the highest number, so him and his age, when he gets up to 20 reps, then he can increase his resistance by 10%. Or more, it depends on whether he's at the bottom of the range. So that 15 to 20 uh, reps, if he gets down to uh, the 15 reps and he's fatigued, that's good. Because as he works on that 15, he'll eventually reach 20, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, once he reaches 20, he wants to add more resistance. And as we continue to increase the weight, this is called progressive resistance training. Now, this is not an either or because we all, to be as healthy as we want to be, to be able to do the things we want to do, we have to not only take care of the nutrition, but we, and we don't want to just go moving and not be getting the greatest benefit from it. We want to learn how to do it right so that we benefit the most from it. So now the speed of reps. How fast a rep should be performed? The extremes go from moving the weight. Did you know there was so much involved here? No. Uh, <laughs> so no. I'm a Marine, and I've done this stuff, and I was never so well educated as a Marine. Exactly. And uh, another reason for starting with the uh, light weights is you're, if your joints have not been uh, conditioned, you're going to injure yourself. But so starting with the light weights is very important to conditioning your joints. Extremes go from moving the weights as fast as you can to super slow where each rep can take 45 seconds to complete. Suggested is two seconds for the lifting phase and then pause and four seconds for the lowering phase. Control, not momentum, is important here. So if you've got too much weight as you're lowering, what's going to happen? It's going to push you down. You want to have the right weight and do the right amount of reps, and you want to do them at the right speed. So what about time between the reps? If you are using the same muscles, you should allow two minutes for the lactic acid to circulate out of the muscle before repeating. If you're not repeating the same exercise or using that same muscle in an opposing exercise, the waiting is not necessary. So uh, people who are serious about their weightlifting, they will do something in between. So they use a different muscle while that lactic acid is getting out of the muscle. They just exercise. When you fatigue that muscle, that's lactic acid that's formed there. So let that rest. Give it the two minutes they're talking about and then move on to another muscle. You can always come back and do another set later. Recovery between workouts. You need to allow 48 hours for recovery. The muscle strain causes tiny tears in the muscle fiber and they rebuild stronger. People usually work out three times per week. After three months, two times a week is adequate for maintaining. So you're only looking at maximizing your body. You're not looking to become a bodybuilder and go to places. You're looking to maximize your health. So after you have done this for three months and you've been doing it three times a week, then you can go back to two times a week and know that you are protecting what you have built. You need to work as many major muscle groups as possible. When practical, you should work the larger muscles 
and multiple joint exercises first, then do the smaller muscles and isolation exercises next. Circuit training. I, 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 did, I didn't know this. This was, I, I knew a lot of this. Uh, but circuit training, uh, I would get in the circuit training and I'd just go around the circuit and do it. I didn't incorporate anything that raised my heart rate. But uh, the where I the the learning that I did this this was uh, present in several pieces of it. This didn't happen in this afternoon. This is something that I have been working on for the better part of the, of three weeks now. Uh, and there's more to follow this. So circuit training, the most effective training is to combine aerobic and strength. And when you can, if you're at the gym when all of the treadmills are not being occupied, you use the circuit, then you go get your heart rate up walk for two minutes, then go back and do the next circuit. That would be another way of letting that lactic acid also get out of your muscles while you're uh, getting your heart rate back up so you can get the benefit of that maximum fat burn. And now we're going to end with a little video. Hey guys, it's Pete Tansley here, and the time at the moment it's just gone midnight, it's 12.15 a.m. on Thursday morning, and I've just finished an insane leg session here at the Priority One studio. Now, I didn't start working out until 11 p.m. tonight. Now, I'm an early bird, I'm up at 4 or 5 a.m. each day, and it was a struggle. My energy was down, and I was almost tempted to go home at 11 o'clock and just get some, get some sleep before I'm up early again tomorrow, but I've got this attitude with exercise, and I've... I've had to work on this, but it's it's a brushing your teeth attitude. Here's what I mean. I guarantee that no matter what time you get home at night, you brush your teeth. Whether it's 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 3 a.m., you go to the bathroom for a few minutes, you put the toothpaste in your brush, and you force the brush in your mouth no matter what. doesn't matter how tired you are, how stressed you are, or how big a day or a night you've had. Exercise needs to be the same. You need a no matter what, whatever it takes attitude to stay in shape 12 months of the year. So I encourage you to adapt this, what I call the toothpaste attitude or the brushing your teeth attitude. Take whatever it takes attitude. No matter what happens in your day, just get it done. Sure, it mightn't be as great as you know working out at lunchtime or, or early morning. My energy was down, but hey, you get in there and you do it. That's my tip for today. Don't forget to brush your teeth tonight. Do it for life, make it fun, and you will do it. There's a lot of things you can do, and it doesn't have to be in a gym. And that concludes tonight. Now we're going to do our feedback. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing the screen. And I will start with Tony. Let's start with Tony. Let me unmute you. Everybody's unmuted. Good. Okay, I'm unmuted now. Okay. <clears throat> well, exercise. I I'm I'm <laughs> I'm backwards. No. I'm I'm not doing I've never done the exercises properly, I guess, because I'm, when I go to the gym, I do one or the other. I don't do the treadmill, and then do the, you know, I do the, the bike maybe, you know, just 10 to 15 minutes on a the bike, then I start doing the weight. But treadmill, I haven't done that because I do a lot of walking someplace else. So I don't think about doing the treadmill between the other, that might sound. That's what I took, a, you know, something different. Yeah, it's <clears throat> exciting now, right? Now we, got, now we got to make a plan. Oh, that's, that's another thing. I now, to write this down. now we got to make a plan. Who are you going to pass to? Uh, Dorothy. That last, that last thing you, you did, Connie. Yes. I didn't understand it. The last exercise screen that you did. About your heart rate? Oh, the very last one about the two minutes or something. Um, oh, you mean tonight? Yes. 
Okay, so when you're when you when you're fatiguing your muscles, and that's going to be different for each person in terms of how much weight they use, then lactic acid builds up in your muscle. Are you asking something? And, and so then they say, don't do the exercise that uses that muscle. Give that muscle two minutes for it to circulate. Is that what you're talking about? That wasn't the last thing. Okay. I, I don't think. I don't I didn't understand it. That thing, no. Are you not hearing me? Well, you're very low. It's, it's very hard to hear you. Volume all of 100%. Yeah. So if you if you could tell me what it was it about, I would tell you. I don't understand it. That's why I said the very last. You want me to share my screen and then show the things again? The very last screen. Okay, let's go. You talking about him? No, before him. When you were talking about exercise. Okay. Right there. Okay, so what they're saying, because when you're doing the circuit training, your heart rate's not elevated. You're just going from machine to machine to machine. And so the lesson was alternate a uh, circuit machine with a treadmill. So you go and walk on the treadmill to get your heart rate back up to your 60%. And then when you go back to the circuit training, now you're still in fat burning mode. What is circuit training? Huh? What is circuit training? Circuit training, you see all those little machines there? Not really. Um, let me make it big. You see the machines right here on the left? People okay. sitting in the bench. You go to the gym there, right, don't you? No, they closed the gym. The, but when you went to the they gym. Did? Yeah, they closed our gym. That's not good. But didn't they have machines in there no. when you went in there? They did. I didn't know they were circuit. Yeah, that's what those. Are. That's called circuit because you you have an arm section, a leg section, uh, hip, butt, and that's the circuit. That's the way they look at it as a circuit. But they're saying combine aerobic with the strength exercise. And that just applies with anything you're doing with strength. And once your heart rate starts getting, if you want to be in fat burn, go do something aerobic, whether it's walking, you, the ecliptical, uh, the bicycle, get your heart rate back up, and then go back and pump some more weight, whether it's two pounds or one pound. They had little step things in between each um, machine. Step, you could do stepping up. So they already have it. They, they already incorporated. That was new for me. I learned that while studying this particular subject. So thank you, Dorothy. Did you have a takeaway? Uh, well, I I don't do enough exercise. I know that, and I love the treadmill. Absolutely love the treadmill. But since I fractured my foot, the doctor told me not to use it, but I think I'm going to go back to it anyway. And you can also get some little lightweights. You can use, remember, in our Meltdown Challenge, they used cans out of your cabinets that had weights. I have weights. And do you do those on a regular basis? Nope. Well, maybe that's something you can work on. I haven't had time for a regular anything. I hear you because I'm mama. Not even a potty break. <laughs> you better take potty breaks. Nobody hits. Nobody hits. So who are you passing to? Um, I'm going to pass it to Denise. You pass to Denise? To who? Denise. Okay. Well, I, I like this, the, uh, the idea of the little weights, and I have them too, so I've never thought to do those, you know, repetition, uh, you know, in reps. And that will help me just to start doing that, I guess. I'm one that's so gun ho you know, I want to do my whole five-mile tape. <laughs> just, that's how I am, but I like to walk. So, um, but I've been uh, doing short walks um, at work, you know, for work, because I sit all day. Yes. But, but what, one thing about that, that guy that got on, whatever his name was, he said he comes home at 11 and he got up at 5. Isn't, I mean, that's not what we're supposed to be doing, are we? No. <laughs> I thought, he's not getting enough rest. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
that's another that's another that one. my best takeaway on that <laughs> <laughs> excellent observation uh -huh. excellent observation so do you want to pass to someone thank you uh i'm um, um, um pass <laughs> i don't know um uh uh you got Lisa and two Marshas. Uh, let's do let's do Lisa. There you go. That makes it easy. Yeah, okay, so and then you I, know the Marshas. Uh, I gotta try and keep my takeaway brief, but um, I have I, I actually am pretty active. But based upon what we learned in our last Zoom about heart rate, I have, that's something I pretty much walk six to 10,000 steps a day, but I will eagerly admit that it's lackadaisical walking. It's not purposeful. It's walking my dog and not really stepping it out and getting my heart rate up. I'm used to it so I can improve there. Um, I don't, I don't do much in the gym simply because of neck back and now shoulder. But what I do do is I exercise in the water every day anywhere from 40 minutes, 45 minutes to an hour and a half. And I'm gathering from this that I'm not making, getting the best bang for my exercise buck. Um, so my takeaway is that I need to be monitoring my heart rate um, and work smarter, not harder when it comes to my activities. But I, I, I started with just walking then I added, struggling through a 45 minute water exercise class. Then I added gloves, water workout gloves to the exercise class. And then I gradually increased my time in the water. And now I have weights I use in the water. And this is all very interesting in how I can get, get better results from my movement. But then I'm also trying to coincide what we've learned here with what I know about the benefits of, of the water, because I honestly have a hard time um, with more strength. Like I, I, I think it would be difficult for me to get in the gym and do strength training, but I'm, I know that I'm also me too. training in the water. Well, it wouldn't be good for you, Denise, until, you know, you're, it's the weight's the first issue. And that's why the beginner, they right. focus on the walking and even not a lot of walking. We'll just to build it up gradually because what we yeah. want to focus on there is the weight. But this was, and, and remember, I'm, I was in the Marine Corps, so I did hardcore stuff, hardcore calisthenics, uh, did the circuit training, did all these things, and I learned things tonight that I didn't even know then and haven't learned since. So, very comprehensive presentation that I can take do better with my movement. I appreciate it. Thank you. Who too? Uh, let's do uh, Bird Mom. I knew she was we'll going to save the that. best for last. We'll save Martha for last. <laughs> yeah. We'll save the best for last. Okay. Uh, I'm actually Alicia. interested in what you have to say, Bird Mom, because you do so yeah. much exercise too. Well, I was going to tell Lisa, it's not necessary to get into a gym. You, you don't have to do strength training and, and hurt your body doing all those machines. I think what you do is wonderful. And the water training is so beneficial, and it's easier on your body and your joints. So don't even feel guilty about not going to a gym. Well, she's doing strength when she has weights and she has yes, the Yes, of course. Yeah. It is yeah. interesting. I agree. Um, yeah, right. Interestingly, uh, I I go dancing with our with Myra, the the Aqua Zumba instructor, and their Zoom instructor, and we were doing something on the dance floor that we do in the pool that I do easily, which uh -huh. is the cross your legs and arm movement. Yeah. And yeah. when she started doing it, I automatically followed her, and I was like, Yeah, no, that works in the pool. That doesn't work so much out here. So, but yeah, I'm gonna stick with the water, but I'm just gonna search yeah. for ways to fine tune more what I do in the water. When but you know, when you know better, you do better. Yes. Go ahead, Marsha. Exactly. 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 And um, my takeaway basically is, um, I guess I'm not doing exercise properly. I mean, when I go to the gym, I like to do, I don't do reps of things. I'll sit at one machine and do like maybe 20 reps and then go to another machine and do 20 reps. I don't sit at one machine and keep doing different things. So. I, I probably should really have a personal trainer. 
if I'm serious about that. But uh, I just go in and do what I want. But if you if you know more now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can focus a little bit more on it because now we know all yeah. the different facts about how exactly, to do exactly. And that was and one I'm, reason yeah. to do that. Yeah, and I'm stubborn because I don't like to start out with little baby weights because I, I know I can lift more, but I, I know I'm doing it wrong. More weight, more reps, less weight. More right. reps, exactly. less. Exactly. High end exactly. is where you want to fatigue. So whatever yes. weight that is. And then once you can do that easily, then you increase your weight back to absolutely right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'd like to pass to Martha. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think my biggest takeaway was that um, even before, I never really monitored my heart rate or my pulse or any of that. I mean, I I basically walked. And then um, I did the read, uh, and they graduate you as you um, reach a certain goal. They'll put you up a next level. <clears throat> but I never really, never really did keep track of my weight or my pulse, and I'm beginning to realize that's very important. Um, it's, it's very, very important in that. Um, I'm not big on going to a gym, but... Um, Dick and I were both lifting, um, starting to do weights uh, because they were doing bands. We were doing the bands and stuff. And I'm going to um, bring some of my stuff with me because I don't have to bring back like uh, clothes or anything because I got enough here. So I'm going to bring back my Wii machine and that because I can bring two suitcases back free. So <laughs> I'm going to do that and start because I miss my week. Mm -hmm. I really do. Um, Dick and I did that a lot. I did it almost every day. All right. But, but I will start. I when I do start. There's walking. always walking. You probably can walk up there now. The weather's yeah. Cold. Well, I can't. I can't uh, hear. On uh, Colleen's road is like if I was walking, I would be taking my like. I'm taking your life right now. So as soon as um my trailer's all set up, so uh. Friday night, I can start staying overnight, so I'll be at the trailer. Congratulations. Yes. That's so in closing, thank you, Marsha. I appreciate that. And so in closing, I'm going to address Denise's point about the tired guy that didn't get enough rest. <laughs> and a, long, <laughs> a long time ago, I read, and it really impacted me, that exercising should be like brushing your teeth. You wouldn't go all day without brushing your teeth. And we yet yeah, we will do we'll let everything get in the way of of exercising daily, and that was really the I, I was surprised I found somebody that actually talked about it and referred to it, and that's what I wanted to remind everybody. We talked about this in the past uh, about exercise should be as important as brushing your teeth. Look who's here! Hi, Martha. I'll go ahead and stop recording now.